Hello, I'm Kane, one of the researchers at Martin Muir, and welcome to this very special edition of Wildlife Weekly, coming to you from Skagafjorda, here in Northern Iceland. WWT and the UK have strong connections with this place, as does Martin Muir. Many of the birds of the wetlands of Martin Muir call Iceland their home. In these special episodes, we're taking you behind the scenes on one of our research projects in this amazing place, and we'll meet some of the people we work with. I saw the bird. WWT has been carrying out research in Iceland since the 1950s. So we're currently at Gardsvatten in Skagafjorda, which is one of our main study sites. And just behind me is a family that are well known to WWT. It's a bird named Dune and its partner Balfron, and they're renowned for bringing lots of cygnets back to the UK. And they're currently out there just behind me, and you can see that this year they've got a bumper brood of seven cygnets, which is absolutely amazing. Here in Skagafjorda, the hooper swans feed on the lush wetland habitat, like the pair behind me that are on a wetland similar to what you can find in the UK. But what's more amazing about this valley is that hoopers can also be found on marine environments. So the adult hooper swans just behind me here have both got orange stained heads. And the reason for this is that Iceland is covered in these small iron rich pools. So the hooper swans will be using these iron rich pools to uh, loaf around in. They'll also use them for feeding in. So there's lots of aquatic vegetation in here that um, the swans feed on. So they'll put their heads under the water to reach these food sources. And as a consequence of that, that's how they get these orange stainings on their heads. As the birds reach the UK, you'll see this as they first arrive. But over the coming weeks, this will eventually wash off. So if you do see a swan with an orange stained head, you can be guaranteed that that bird has come from Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. WWT has been doing ground and aerial surveys of swans in Iceland for decades, developing a good understanding of many aspects of their lives by identifying individuals by their darvic rings on their legs. So how do we catch the swans to ring them? Over the summer, the hooper swans moult their large flight feathers so they can't fly. Over this time, we visit the family groups on remote mountain lakes with our Icelandic colleague, Sverja Torstensson, who we've been working with here for decades. Did you see any hoopers? No. Oh, God. We can, we can. The birds are caught by one person in a boat and it's important to catch them as quickly as possible. As we near them in the boat, we reach out with a swanook, which acts alike a shepherd's crook, and then bring them in. We then wrap them in a swan jacket and they relax. And we get them back to land for a health check, ringing and release as quickly as possible. So it's amazing to think that this bird was just still in its egg one month ago. And at three, three and a half months old, it will start that epic long migration across the Atlantic to come and winter with us in the British Isles. Can you imagine a three and a half month old human being trying to cross the Atlantic at that age? This bird that we spotted later on in the trip is a Martin Muir regular, BLY. Through researchers, volunteers and members of the public recording sightings of these Darvit rings have enabled us to follow the fortunes of these amazing birds. So look out for BLY from the Swan Link Hide here at Martin Muir. The Hoopers will start arriving back at Martin Muir in the next few weeks with their great migration begins. So come along to learn about their incredible journeys. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please show it with your family and friends on Twitter and Facebook.